coronavirus is nisil. People have lost their jobs, livelihoods, and unfortunately, many have lost their lives. As a result of the pandemic and hard lockdown in 2020, my position at a media sales house was made redundant. Now that's a fancy word for retrenchment. Retrenchment is defined as the reduction of costs or spending in response to economic difficulty. Now, just like everyone else, I thought to myself, this would never happen to me. And it has. So, I have a bit of time. I decided, let me go around the country, talk to my friends, talk to other South Africans, see how they have been affected, and what we can all learn from this mess. As we are recording, South Africa is experiencing widespread riots and looting of epic proportions. Businesses are left bare, malls have shut down, trucks are burnt on the roads, and the transport of goods such as food and medicine and other supply is practically non-existent. There are fears of food and fuel shortages. To be honest, I'm shitting myself. Before Skubel Ngale podcast, here's a clip from the SABC. It's dated July 11th, 2021. And this clip will give you a sense of Bogunza Galani on the ground. Um, by now, the riots have been going on for a few days. And you can feel and hear people's pain throughout these few days. Have a listen. More chaos, looting everything in their wake. More looting, police now firing rubber bullets. Workers affected by the looting are fed up. This worker says uh, they've basically now lost their jobs. She's asking what will they eat. This worker says that she has to pay rent. She does not know how she's going to be able to do that now. Just, Leanne, this is absolutely devastating here. Someone has just been beaten uh, to the ground here. A police officer was also injured and had to be treated by emergency services. So despite indications uh, that the South African National Defence Force will be deployed uh, to problematic areas, including like here in Soweto, where you can see uh, the uh, looting continues, uh, the uh, residents here uh, say they will uh, continue. Uh, this entire mall here at Dipcliffe Square in Soweto has uh, been looted. Not long, boots on the ground, some young ones caught in the act, a little punishment. Police also had their hands full in Meadowlands. Residents continued looting here despite the death of 10 people in a stampede. Pretty hectic stuff, right? On the opposite end, while this was happening, well, after it happened, the Southkins came together to help up with the cleaning efforts and to provide supplies give people food, water, whatever they needed. And some very, very brave South Africans actually stood up and protected certain properties and areas that hadn't been looted. In as much as it was a horrible, horrible thing that we went through, it also showed that what is possible if South Africans stand together. It's just unfortunate that standing together has to come under these circumstances. Here's where we are as a country. The looting has affected business severely. The supply of goods and services has been practically halted in a lot of areas, particularly KZN and Gauteng, which are the areas that had been affected the most. We are in the midst of a third wave. We are meant to be doing our vaccine rollout. When it comes to jobs, a lot of South Africans have been out of participating in the economy in any case. South Africans are going through the most. Jobs are scarce. Ganyi wa gunzim. For like the past 12 years or so, I've had a great career in media. I've worked for great brands like YFM, MTV, where I was both program manager. I've worked for Media Mark. In my head, I always figured that I'm going to have a great career in the media business. And eventually, I'll start my own media business. But now, when this kind of thing hits, and suddenly you have to question everything or every plan that you thought you had or knew, it's a big fuck up. The pandemic has punched me in the mouth like everybody else around the world. And now we have to pivot <laughs> and figure out how we do this shit going forward. Because when you got two small kids, I'm in a choice. You have to have to make a plan.
Where's the best place to start a conversation? Um, the best place to start is <laughs> with my wife. Uh, my wife tends to be a lot more intuitive, duh, a lot more smarter than me. And I just needed to get a sense of, before I ask her the question of why she figured that losing the job or being retrenched was the best thing to happen to me. During this time in Jay, Malukunga Naspani, I needed to understand from her, what is it like to live with me? Um, when you're passionate about something, you want to get it right or you want to focus, you do have a, a bubble of nervous energy, anxiety going. And somehow you want to or you try to have that transferred to whomever's in your immediate surroundings. Like I've done it too. That's how I can recognize it. Like to get the person you're sitting with and in your case, your wife on the same level of sense of urgency or importance and respect that you have for that particular project you know and you you want me to get on your level on that and to be excited to be as nervous to be to be in tune with what your outcomes you want them to be and in any given point in time when you feel that i'm not like that or i'm not responding the way you think i should it's war you know it, it, it actually goes pear shaped very quickly and it's really based on you or perceiving that i don't think it's as important as you think it should be so living with you watching you go through the retrenchments the personality shifts the strain the stress and how you ride it on after 50 years i know what excites you and i know what doesn't like you have a physiological reaction to things that are very important to you to things that you're very excited about and depending on the degree of importance you'll even go to a point where you don't actually you can't eat the day before i guess that's her take on situations i swiftly moved on then to asking her the question of why she thought being retrenched with two kids under five to look after when she doesn't have a nine to five She's hustling, but doesn't have permanent income. Her income is sporadic. Why she thought this is the best thing to happen to me in a long time. And that made you, you're full of dreams, my love. You're going to do production. You're going to be a storyteller. You're going to get into movies. You wanted to do this. You're going overseas. You're going to travel. You even had mom buy you. Where is that thing? I think no, that's a box somewhere. We've got a new recorder now for 2020. Yeah, but I, much better. But I could, you, you kept it. What, yeah, I kept what it. was it called? The camcorder? It was, uh, it's actually here. Mm. It's the flip. Yeah, you got the flip that actually still works. No, the flip doesn't work. It does. No, you it just doesn't. have to charge it properly. It does. The flip doesn't work. But the technology is old. So. Yeah. So you got the flip because you're really about storytelling and every opportunity. I watched that was helping you get there. The part of you that's practical and pragmatic won over your creative side constantly. You have an intense sense of integrity and responsibility for me, for the kids and everything that you have chosen to commit to. You know, you're not a flaky type of guy. So you got this job. The intention for this job was to learn how the sales environment in radio works and how does it work, who are the players, what do you need to learn. And you were front and center in all of that. And towards the end, it was no longer about the knowledge base. Sure, you're shit hard at PowerPoint now <laughs> and you can do all sorts of things. But like, what does that have to do with the end goal for why you got there? And when you began, you had given it a time frame of two years and you wanted to get into this. Indirectly, your subconscious had already planned and plotted what you needed to do on a time frame. So the reason you ended up staying there and hanging out was because you now had two boys. You had a wife who was still recovering. We needed a new everything, so we moved. However, the cost to the person you were was too high. And I was watching it all the time. You forgot how to play. You're like the funniest guy I know, and you don't want to play with a toddler, you know? You're That's annoyed true. a lot. My yeah, your toddlers. I don't want to play with my kids. Mm -mm. No way. No, seriously. When was this? You'd, like, you'd have a line like, yeah, but I'll, I'll do this when they understand and we can converse <laughs> and like all sorts of things. And I'm like, look at this guy. Like, I promise you, like if COVID didn't happen, you and I would have had real serious fights about how we're bringing up our kids. Because now, as you can tell with both kids, they mimic everything that you say and do. And you laugh about it because you guys all actually share the same boy 
crappy <laughs> sense of humor. But you have it because you engage with your kids and you play with your kids. But when you were working, you were very focused on that. And as good as you were at it and as amazing as you were at it, because you have an awesome work ethic, like I wish everybody had that. But you have, it wasn't who you had set yourself out to be. And I had a real big problem with that. However, because it was providing for the family, you were fulfilling your primary value of being a provider to your family, a provider and a protector. So whatever you think you tell yourself about your values, at the end of the day, all of your decisions are driven and they're based on how you protect and provide for your family all the time. And you'll give up on your dream. You'll give up on, you'll compromise a lot of things to make sure that's okay, including what you know you should do with your finances. You save all the time and you tap in all the time come crunch time and you get upset, which is a normal reaction. But you do all of those things because your primary value is to provide and protect your family. You're a knight through and through. You know, so when the job itself forced you out of it, I was like, thank God, <laughs> you know, he can come back uh... and complete the other parts of him that are important to him. It's an awesome thing to be a knight, to provide and be happy. Literally, it's amazing. And it's important. So I'm like, are we still doing movies? Are we still doing radio? Now we're doing podcasts. I don't care which medium you end up picking. As long as you're consistently and constantly trying to tell stories, I think we'll be fine. That's the guy I signed up for. Yeah, it makes sense. You know? That's why I prayed for it. Oh, okay. The jobs and what they do, I mean, even though you do get caught up and then it gives you the false sense of security, which is you get an income and you get some benefits and you think that, okay, cool, that's what I have to do. But in actual fact, I just end up, you end up being more in trouble. Hmm, because that's the weird thing. The we it's not. What you forget is that the industry you have chosen to participate in career-wise is full of ego-boosting perks. Yeah. We had no idea how expensive it was to party and club like we did. But because you're at Y, all of that bill was paid for us until we had to pay for it. Like, I didn't even know how much champagne was at a club. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I had no clue how much champagne was at a club. But that's the part where you get sucked in because it ticks so many boxes of your life and compromising on that one singular one, it just doesn't weigh up anymore. Reverse, I, firstly, I heard you and I still hear you when you were taking me to JLT the other day to work and you're like, I don't like the person you're becoming. This job is not good for you. And obviously, I ended up quitting because that's important. To me. However, I also made the decision at the time not to get caught up in anything that was less than of an expression of who I was. And that's not easy to do because if you were not there, I'd probably have some kind of nine to five to make sure I have money coming in and out. It is not easy to be capable and have such an inconsistent income because you can't plan for anything at all and you hope it comes together. But that's why me and you have to work and we work so well. But in starting Life Design, in starting Youth Nations, in partnering up and doing at media, all of those things are an expression of who I am and what I want to do in the world and have that impact. And even when I became a mom, the primary goal was to ensure that my babies lived at least healthy lives until two. That is no easy feat because a lot of who you are as a mother, it takes a backseat and you had to foot that bill. And here I am wanting pure bottles for my kids instead of the normal <laughs> stuff off the shelf. I didn't know the difference. <laughs> you didn't, you know, but I, I was always that mom, like even like the kids and the house and the thing I had to drive that so we're here you're retrenched I don't think we've been any happier than we've been in the last five years yeah that's because I'm home yeah and I and, can participate and you're fun and I'm f I've always been fun yeah but you forgot to be I, I didn't I, forget I, I, to be I, I, I had don't a job you don't you remember when you were you like when you were in your you used to have this look and you were slim fit sliced and well, diced well you still don't <laughs> <laughs> No, that's, that's not what, what you're I was saying. That's no, what no, no, like. no, 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 no. I remember when you and I, and it was captured perfectly when you were leaving White to go to MTV. Mm. There's a picture. Yeah, I remember those pictures. That guy. I loved that guy still, by the way. But that guy and the guy you are now, chalk and cheese. Chalk and cheese. In a good way. Isn't good or bad. Oh, it's just the way. You know? Mm. And I and 
I don't know if I have that many milestones in my life where there is an image that captures all those different phases of my growth and my development as a person, mm -hmm. you know? And you could be you could be frivolous and say, oh, no, being a dad changed you. I don't think it changed you at all. You're still the same guy. But you have allowed yourself to be you. Well, what it did, it did refocus me, you know, because before, well, I, like you said, I've always been focused about a lot of things, just discipline generally. But it, it does as, as a guy. And when you have kids, especially boys, it does suddenly give you a big sense of responsibility, not just to the boys, but to the world and to the community, you know, and how you behave and how you carry yourself some guys rise up to that and some guys don't and some mm -hmm. guys are just in the middle and a big part of that is you have to now be that guy you have to look after your kids you have to look after your family you know you just have to be a better person i think that's what it is it doesn't necessarily mean that you change but you can't you unfortunately you don't have the luxury just to live your life the way you used to so that's mm -hmm. how i see it even now with kids, like a simple example, you and I don't have the luxury to have a big night and go out and get pissed and come back at two. You know, even if there was a babysitter, but true to form, your kids will be up at three. <laughs> so you actually don't get a chance to sleep in. And this is Murphy's Law also. So you have to then reconsider your decisions about everything. Mm -hmm. Lifestyle, nutrition, but automatically then you just make better decisions. But I think the big myth that was sold is it's the work bit that I need to be able to provide. But for you to provide for your children doesn't necessarily mean you have to do that job because the kids don't ask you to do that. The kids don't even ask you for anything other than to play and for food. Yeah, they know. don't even ask your kids don't even ask you for clothes. No, they don't. So what I'm saying is no one has to stay in a miserable job or a job that doesn't see the best of themselves coming out, like you're saying earlier, just so that they can provide. Because the kids don't ask you to be miserable so that you can provide. Then we always blame it on the kids or looking after people and saying, I'm staying because of that. No, you're not staying because of that. You're staying because you've got pipe dreams. Your dreams or fear of leaving or this. Like it's a lot of things. Mm. No, you've got pipe dreams. Okay. So now, what what are we doing now? So, no, I know what I think I'm going to do. I want to go talk to people, my friends mostly, figure out how they have survived like 2020. Or well, some friends didn't even get their jobs back. You know, some people don't have work. So it, it'll be interesting. So I'm, I'm keen to do that. I will spend my time stories. telling stories, just, you know, just connecting people and seeing how far that takes us. I okay. agree with you. Cool. Well, thank you. What is called a vocation? We'll see. Well, with my wife's blessing, I'm off to see what the world has to offer. And I'm keen to touch base with other people, see how the pandemic has affected them. Hopefully with time passing, I will be able to come up with a plan for the next phase of my life. I'm starting this podcast where everything began, the place where eventually I was retrenched. I catch up with a former colleague, one that was not retrenched, to get a different perspective. Uh, for me, it was extremely difficult. First time having to gone through something like that. So uh, professional work that I have been doing, I've been working particularly in the field that I'm working in um, for the past uh, 15 years. So for the very first time, I had to go through Section 189. If you have a story to share about your experiences with retrenchment and or job loss, please check out our Facebook page at 1730 Media. Like, comment, let us know what you think so far. And please share anything or any experience with us. The music is Brooklyn and the Bridge by Nico Stuff and The Missing 11th by DJ Williams. The news clip is from SABC News YouTube page. Thank you to my wife, Tessa Pule, for her contribution. I hope to see you on the next episode. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode. Remember that Facebook page is at 1730 Media. See you next time. Hola.